Hey everybody, glad you're here. Today we're going to be going over the S30 rear suspension kit. This fits the 240Z, 260Z, and 280Z models. We're first going to be going over what's included. We're going to be going over the optional dust boot option, the construction of our products, as well as the QC process that we have, the base settings that we recommend to get you to an alignment shop, and our optional color options. So first we're going to be going over what's included. What's included first is going to be our rear tubular subframe. You'll notice here that it's designed for the 370Z differential. We also have an option for the Ford Super 8A differential. If you're pushing around 600 horsepower, I recommend the 370Z differential. It's going to be a little bit smoother. And overall, we've seen customers really enjoy the 370Z smoothness and quietness, especially when they're sub 6 to 700 horsepower. Once you go past that horsepower level, we do recommend the Super 88. The 8.8 differential is a lot more robust. It is more bulletproof and overall is a lot more friendly for hard launches. Now, something to note that the Super 88 is hard mounted onto the subframe. Although the 370Z is also hard mounted, it does have the differential comes with poly bushings in the front. The subframe is still isolated from the car with bushings back here and bushings at the front. However, we just noticed that the Super 88 does transfer a lot more whining noise of the differential onto the car itself. So that covers the subframe construction. Next, we're gonna go over the rear uprights. You're gonna get a pair of rear uprights. Now, these are our updated design. They're a lot more heavier duty. They have a caliper bracket integrated into it as well as camber adjustment at the knuckle. You're also gonna get a pair of these rear upright tubes, as we call them. Now, if you don't order them with our welding service or coilovers, you'll have them bare for you, the customer, to weld them onto our coilovers. We have more information on how to do that in our install video of this product. But when this customer ordered, he ordered it as a weld-in service, so this is why the tubes are fully powder-coated, because that's a part of the service that we offer. Next, we're also gonna have a pair of the rear lower control arms, as well as a pair of the front clamps, and a pair of the axles. Don't want that rolling off. You also get a set of the bushings that go into the back. We do not pre-install them, but they install them just like how you normally do with a mustache bar. You just clamp them in there with a pot and they're polyurethane, so they do have some give. You're also gonna get a set of sway bar spacers, and finally, the hardware pack that goes along with it. The next thing we're gonna cover is gonna be the optional dust boots. If you select the dust boot option on the website, they're gonna be these squishy little rubber dust boots. They go over the heim joints. You're gonna have eight total, and that'll cover four on each of the control arms. Now, we do not pre-install the dust boots. We do recommend them if you plan to daily drive them or plan to drive them in any sort of weather, rainy, salty, sandy weather. However, if you plan on having a show car, it's not gonna get a lot of miles, you don't really need the dust boots. We haven't seen any benefit that they provide if you're only driving a couple hundred miles a year. And finally, we're gonna be going over the construction. So the construction of the subframe is a full tubular subframe and welded construction. The only part, you'll notice that the back bar here is removable. We usually have this to aid in the installation of the diff process. If you happen to have to keep the subframe installed and want to remove the diff, it is easier obviously to drop the subframe and the design of the subframe does make it a lot easier as you only have the two bolts in the rear and the four bolts in the front. However, if you don't want to remove the subframe and you will need to drop the differential if you ever need to, it's a lot easier just to remove the rear bar. You have two socket bolts right here that you use to remove them. Next, we're gonna be going over the rear uprights. Now, these rear uprights are our latest iteration. They're a lot more friendlier for hard launches, and these are very robust compared to our last version. You also have the pair of the rear upright tubes. As I mentioned before, this customer selected them as fully powder coated. We weld the ears on them. The ears also have a slot on here to adjust for camber at the knuckle level, which makes alignments very, very easy. And finally, we have the steel tubular control arms. The steel to the control arms are fully welded. All the, all the joints on the control arms themselves are TIG welded and they come pre-assembled with our hardware, which includes any, any items that have threads in them. So that concludes most of the construction process of the suspension parts. Finally, we have the axle shafts themselves. Ooh, we have the axle shafts themselves. These are 4340 steel hardened axle shafts. They have been very robust and handled a lot of power. So one thing that we always want to mention to customers is wheel hop. Wheel hop is the number one killer for axles. So we always recommend before you start driving your car is start having some gentle rolls, start getting a feel for it, see how the car handles. If you're starting to gain wheel hop, adjust your suspension settings to counteract that so you can maintain the axles. 
And finally, we're gonna to touch on how the subframe bolts to the car. You have polyurethane that isolates it from the car, keeping it a lot smoother of a ride compared to our first iteration that was solid mounted in the front. We've noticed a drastic improvement in having this completely isolated from the chassis and overall creates a much more comfortable riding experience. So up next, we're gonna go over the QC process of the rear suspension kit. Now we have a thorough QC process that goes through this binder. We want to make sure that the customer is happy with the form fit or function at the end user and to make sure all our products are being able to be installed properly and all threads and debris is all clear of contamination. The first thing that we always look for is gonna be our packing list accuracy. So packing list accuracy is gonna say that this customer orders this rear suspension kit. He ordered it in with dust boots, without dust boots, in this color, without this color. And whatever iteration he might have, we have a list to make sure that whatever he ordered is on this checklist and we check that along to make sure it's all here. That includes hardware packs, these, you know, if it's welded or if it's not welded, rear uprights and the color and as well as the bushings and the small other additional items. So if he has everything, he gets a red dot on his order. And then we know that that order is ready for the next part, which is a hardware sheet. The hardware sheet is this vacuum sealed hardware sheet. Now this is crucial to make sure that we have all the correct number of washers, bolts, socket heads, whatever have you. And if there is anything missing that we want to make sure that we record that that is missing. So either we hold the shipment until we get receive the part or let the customer know ahead of time that he's going to be expecting another box of the missing art items. The, the third thing is going to be the cosmetic threshold. So we're going to visually inspect all the parts, make sure there's no chips, things or dents on any machine surfaces or any surfaces that get powder coated. Now, something to note is that we do have to hook the items for powder coating and the heavier the item, the thicker the hook. So something that we try to implement is we try to hook it in spots that there's either going to be a bolt going through or something that's not going to be visually seen to reduce the amount of hook marks that we have. Now, if there are some small hook marks that are inevitable, we do try to cover them up with a paint pen to make sure the product still stays sealed and keeps them from rust corrosion. So the fourth part of our QC process is gonna be our whole tolerance process. Now, there is going to be a little bit of leeway, but we wanna make sure that the bolt is not so tight that it's impossible to get a bolt through. Some slight persuasion is totally acceptable by our standards, but we also wanna make sure that it's not super loose where the customer is having a lot of wiggle, which can cause suspension to move in and out. So first, we're gonna go over all the hole tolerances, and all the hole tolerances are then found in our QC handbook, which the person who's gonna be QCing them will go cross-reference the product to what holes they require, and then go ahead and check it with this ring. Now, this ring has bolts that we cut down, so make sure it ensures the same bolts that we use. We can see here that our bolts are relatively tight, but they're not too loose, but they do go through as long as you persuade them a little bit. So the next part is gonna be our hole tolerances for the mounting pieces. We wanna make sure that the mounting pieces have a bolt hole that goes in and has enough as far as the slides as well go. Now, something to note is going through this process does sometime chip a little bit of the powder coat. We do try to touch that up with a paint pen so, so then the customer still gets a nicely finished product. Now, the fifth part of our QC process is gonna be the machine surfaces. Now, these don't really have any machined or bearing surfaces to necessarily bolt to. However, there is the axle shafts that gum provided in the kit. So as far as the axle shafts, we have a spider here that is from the OEM manufacturer of the axle. And we just wanna make sure that it slips in there. Now, not, not every axle is gonna slip this easily. Here you can see this is nice. It doesn't have any wiggle. It's a very nice fit. But also note that that's not gonna be the case for every single axle that we make, just because the spiders on all of them might have some tolerances from the factory. Now we, now we still check every axle with a spider, but just note that your spider might be slightly undersized and you may need a mallet or a rubber hammer to insert that. We do have a great axle installation video, which you can reference over here, and then that would help you understand how to install the axles. However, any threads that are gonna need adjustment for alignment purposes, we wanna make sure that they're loose. So we go ahead and make sure all the threads are hand tightened only, just to make sure that the end user is able to loose, loosen and tighten them as needed. We wanna make sure that there's no grit left over from our sandblasting process pre to before the powder coat process. And this ensures that the customer, once he receives the products, he's gonna be able to adjust them really, really easily. Now here you can see we have this double adjuster. Now they don't come sandblasted, so they are always gonna be relatively easy, but we do install them fully beforehand just to make it a little bit easier for the end user.
So on the root control arms, we do have threads and we want to make sure that all the threads are able to be hand loosened or hand tightened. This is just to ensure that there's no grit or grime into the threads. And so the customer is able to thread it for his alignment or track with or whatever he wants to do with it a lot easier rather than having to potentially mess up the threads if there's grit and grit sand media in there. And finally, the bushings. The bushings are the last part of our QC process. We want to make sure that the bushings are installed correctly. Here we go ahead and we can see visually that the inside of the bushing is installed correctly as well as the outside, which we don't install. We want to make sure that we provide them with the same correct hardware pack. That concludes the QC process as far as what is going to be included, how we check it. Now, in the manufacturing process of the rear subframe, we want to make sure that after it's done being welded, that it's still straight and within tolerance. We've 3D scanned multiple different S30 chassis, and we came up with a fixture that checks it after they get manufactured to ensure that it gets fitted onto the car. If your car has ever been in an accident or you think it might be a little bit tweaked, feel free to message us. We can help you out getting the correct dimensions so then you would know before you order if for some reason you might have a little bit of tolerancing issues and then you know how to tackle that ahead of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys our manufacturing fixture. This usually gets checked before it gets powder coated so we don't risk damaging the powder coat. But for this sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it looks. So you can see here, this is our QC fixture. It's got pucks at the end that go inside the, the rear subframe and it's got two tabs in the front that ensure that it sits inside that position really well. So I'm first gonna just seat this in there and you can see here, it seats inside the cups really well. Visually, although the bushings are in the way, this is why we check this before we get powder coated. However, we can I can tell visually that this is in the center of the bushing. We have the spreader bar as well to help during the install video, because there is a little bit of warpage that these ears do swing in after they get welded. But here we can visually see that this passes our QC and the sort of the fabrication side. And we know that with 99.9% .9 accuracy, this is gonna fit onto your car as long as it wasn't damaged. Next, we're gonna be going over the base setting of the suspension. So what we recommend for customers is using the base setting onto the control arm to the subframe as the rear topmost hole and the front middle hole. Now, we do plan to have another revision that actually removes the topmost holes because we realize that customers never really use them and they do interfere sometimes in the car. So we actually will eventually have it so it's only the top hole on the rear subframes. You can offset them if you would like. That can help you with some something called anti-squat in geometry. However, in this case, we do recommend just having them in the top hole to start. Final setting is gonna be on the rear control arms. We do recommend of having about a quarter inch of thread past the jam nut. We do send these completely installed with no threads exposed. So you would have to pull them out, but from there you want about a quarter inch of thread exposed on the jam nut, both on the inside and the outside. Your toe adjustment is gonna to come from this adjuster over there and that adjuster is gonna be a part on your rear knuckle. That concludes the base settings to get yourself to an alignment shot. Finally, we're gonna go over color options. Now this customer opted for this wrinkled red or a hammered red finish. It is not our standard color, which is hammered black, but it is a very durable wrinkle finish or hammered color, very similar to the hammered black's durability. Now we do rec now we do have an assortment of different colors that you can choose from. If you wanna watch this video over here, we can explain to you which color would be better for your specific build. But this wrinkle red, we love it, the standard color, we carry it a lot. And it's an excellent color for both robust durability and to have a little bit of zazz under your car. That concludes the product overview video on our rear suspension kit. If you have any questions or concerns, always give us a call or send us an email. And as always, subscribe below.